having trouble with the, the recording. It doesn't seem to be recording. So um, while you're getting your calculators out, I'll, I'll just put on the recording what we're doing. We're calculating the uncertainty for these values and just showing again the propagation of uncertainty and how it's calculated. So we're calculating the uncertainty in the numerator because we need that to calculate the uncertainty for this division. So has someone calculated what the numerator is? 23604? 23604? Yes. Point? Yes. No, it shouldn't be. This is a, this is a subtraction. Oh, I do. I do. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let me let me get my pencil my right. Let me just mark through it. Okay. One more time. Four nineteen? Okay, so that's the numerator value. What is S numerator? Okay. That's gonna be the square root of SY squared plus SB squared. Anybody follow that from the, the equations, the propagation of uncertainty equations? Whenever you have addition and subtraction, it's the, the sum of the squares of the variances. This one is unknown. So we have to put a zero there, which is kind of a problem. So if you wanted to also improve this analysis, would you just run one Y sample or would you run three? I mean, at least so you could get a standard deviation, right? And so this is kind of, uh, what we have is a, is a little problematic in that we just ran one check sample. Okay. So we can't do anything about that now, that's our data. So we just have SB squared Add it to zero and take the square root. So it's SB squared and you take the square root, so it's just SB. Okay? So that's going to be equal to SB, which is equal to 1500. It's really like 1505 up here, but let's say 1500. <coughs> So now we have the numerator value here, 27,419, and we have the uncertainty in the numerator. And we can solve for x. S, x, which is what we're looking for, is equal to x times the square root. What's this first term? See up here, x is the ratio of the numerator, and what's this value? M. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one you do first, it could be S numerator over the numerator. plus the uncertainty of M divided by M. See, these are RSDs. The RSD of the numerator squared plus the RSD of M squared. Add those together, take the square root, and that would be the RSD of, of X, but we want the uncertainty in X, so we bring X from the denominator, denominator over here, up here, and multiply it by out this result. And so let's go ahead and put in our numbers. So it's 65.8 parts per billion, square root of the numerator. Let's see, it was uh, 1,500 over 27,419. And then six over 417. 
Do you see where those numbers came from? Look in the ANOVA table. And so then you hammer th that through your calculator. So of course in Excel you use cell values. You know, you come up here for this 6 here, you can come up and grab, you know, this number here. And for 417, you come up and grab that cell. And for SB you know, you come up and grab this cell. And the numerator, you're going to have to take this, um, you know, Y value here, 28, that cell, and subtract the intercept cell. And so that would be your intercept. So you just use cell references in Excel. You don't have to use your calculator. But if you were to do it by hand and like on the exam, this is going to be half of your written part. The other half would be calibrating, finding what X is, and then the the second half will be calculating the uncertainty in X. This is exactly what I want you to do on the exam. But the one complication that's different on the exam is I want you to be able to take into account an uncertainty in Y. See, in this case, we don't have any uncertainty in Y, but on the exam, you will. So this will not be zero because it's rarely zero. You typically run three samples and calculate the standard deviation for Y. So I don't want you to memorize this and say, oh, yeah, Y is zero, because <laughs> it's not always zero. So, And the uncertainty in the numerator is not always the uncertainty in B. You know, it's going to be the uncertainty in Y squared plus the uncertainty in B squared, and you take the square root. So uh, this uses the same procedure, but it's going to be different numbers, obviously. So what did we end up with? 3.7 Good. <laughs> and notice that you get the answer in parts per billion because of this x value is in parts per billion. Okay. But notice this is this is unitless. This is peak area divided by peak area. And this is the ratio. It's like peak area is per parts per billion divided by peak area per parts per billion. So all of the units cancel in these relative standard deviation numbers. And then your unit for your uncertainty is whatever the unit of X is. So that works out nicely. And then if I wanted you to give me the confidence interval, the 95% the confidence interval, this is S, X. And so what do I have to do to this number to get the confidence interval? 1.96, right. So take this number times 1.96 to give the 95% confidence. And it's the CI, confidence interval. So we would report our data as X is equal to, and I would say mm, we could keep two digits of uncertainty like we have up there, 60, um, 65.8. Let's see, what is it when we get, when we multiply this by 1.96? It's still in the, yeah, it's still the same order of magnitude. So 65.8 plus or minus, what do we have here? 7 point what? 29. Okay, so I'd round that up to 3, 7.3. So that's at, and you put that at 95%. So you're telling them this is the confidence interval, not just plus or minus S. Make sense? Okay. And then I would go ahead and say <laughs> N equals 1, because we ran one sample. <laughs> that also tells them a little bit about your uncertainty, you know? <laughs> Now it was externally calibrated, so it, you know, it's not just like you just ran one a one point calibration, but you just ran one of the blood samples on here. You didn't run three. Um, so, okay, so that's that's the propagation of uncertainty. We'll definitely open it up for questions on this. This is um, this is.
is as complicated as it gets. So it's not that bad. Yes. Um, on the exam, um, like, I noticed that when you're doing your work by hand, you just round it all through numbers to kind of make it easier for the typewriter. Yes. On the exam, you want to put yes, I want you to round like that because I want, I mean, keep three digits of certainty, like, like the 1500. I mean, it's definitely 150. The, the, the five is in the fourth place, and so in calculating the uncertainty, I want at least those first three significant figures so that I don't just have it balloon by rounding. Okay, so I would, in my intermediate calculations, keep three, probably four makes, makes more sense. But like the 28,632, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, you could write, 20, 28, 600, but in those intermediate calculations, I would just, you know, keep three or four, probably four digits of, of certainty. Now, when you're doing a subtraction, you got to pay attention and keep the place value. So, I'm subtracting uh, 1,500 from 28,632. I'm going to go ahead and keep all the way down to the ones for that subtraction. But then the multiplication and division is really where you can just keep four digits of certainty. Uh, but what I'm looking for is that you're, you're showing your work and that you know how to propagate the uncertainty. Uh, if you can do it for four digits of certainty, you could do it for seven. Okay, It's just longer in the calculator. And so if you can show me that you can do it with you know rounded sort of back of the envelope estimates, that's great. I can see that you know what you're doing. That's really what you're trying to tell me on the test, is that you know what you're doing. Uh, it's not that you got the same number I got to within 10%. You know, you could be off 10%, but you showed me you know what you're doing. That's good. Okay, so I don't look at it and say, ah, oh, I got, I got 65.8 and you got 65.6. Fail. <laughs> you know. Um, but I will be looking at this number right here. Why would this number tell me if you know what you're doing or not? Notice that that number's not anywhere in the in the ANOVA table. It's not the Y value. It's not the B value. It's it's nowhere on that page. And, and most of the time, students, when they're trying to figure stuff out, they're going to just use the numbers they see on the page. <laughs> right? And so what is tempting for you to do is to stick in the Y value, 28,632, or the B value, you know, 1213. But it's neither one of those. It's Y minus B. If you know what you're doing, you're going to put Y minus B there because you calculated the numerator and the uncertainty in the numerator. And that can tell me that you know what you're doing. If you just put Y there, I know you don't know what you're doing because it's Y minus B. That's the uncertainty in the numerator. And so I can look at it, and that's like the first thing I will look at and say, did they know what they're doing? Oh, they put Y there. No, they don't know what they're doing. And so that's a, even though that's just one number, that mean that indicates to me a serious uh, flaw in your approach. Okay, and so that's what I'm looking for. And I'll give you a little rubric that I prepared for P, for the PCM class, but it's sort of general of uh, what what makes a good answer on a written exam, you know, and and it'll kind of give you a, a guide to to how to how to satisfy me that you know what you're doing. And I don't think anybody's ever. I mean. I never got one of those when I was in class. <laughs> and, you know, how many, how many professors actually tell you what they're looking at with the written questions? And so this part of this AQ course is, is helping me uh, think about the techniques that I use to communicate to you what my expectations are. And I think this is a really good rubric. It tells you, uh, you know, sort of what I'm looking for in terms of units. I want to see your units um, in the intermediate steps, not just the final answer. I want to see that you have uh, the equations that you're going to be using, that you put those out there, and that you're showing me the model that you're using or the approach. And then I also want to see some explanatory text uh, 
Like in this case, I guess the at 95% and n equals 1, that kind of stuff, that, that would call, qualify as explanatory text. Uh, but if the, if the answer is way off, don't just leave it sitting there. If you're, in, if you're taking an exam and you calculate it and you've got, you've got an uncertainty that's just crazy bad and, and you're bothered by that, you've got to let me know that you're bothered by that. Does that make sense? You're bothered by something. You got to let me know, because otherwise I think, "Wow, this is such a crappy result," and they have no clue. It's crappy. No, you do have a clue. It's crappy, but you didn't tell me that you know. So on the test, you've got to communicate with me to let me know what you know. And if you get a bad result and there's no time to go back, say this can't be right. <laughs> you know, and you start looking back, and you, if you find your error, say, "I found my error here." Then that is really valuable to me. Because I can tell that you can, you can self-evaluate. You can look at your work and you can say, hmm, this just doesn't smell right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's part of my evaluation. That's going to be worth points. Okay. Yeah. So I'll give you that rubric. We'll talk about it next time. And uh, I guess we're done a little bit early today. So mm -hmm. since we started the calibration examples last time. Yes? Okay, Sam, what exactly are you going to provide for us? I'll have these uncertainty, you know, propagation of uncertainty equations. Um, I think that's, I think that's the only equations. But I'll look through the homeworks and the notes and things. And if there's anything, um, I like in this class not to do the note card just because there, there's so many. Um, essentially, what I've seen when I've done note cards in here is they just basically will write the whole practice exam on the note card, you know, and it's just concepts after concepts. It's not really in the spirit of of, you know, equations that are hard to, hard to memorize and make sure you don't screw that up. So I just provide the equations for you and require you to know all of the terms and everything like that in your head. I want you to have those in your head, not on the note card. So. All right, great.